Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, it's Del and I'm back again today with episode 31 of The Book of Unwritten Tales. If you have not watched the previous episode, before I start, just go back and watch the last 5 minutes of the previous episode because that was absolutely mental. It was just such a hectic end to the episode and a ton of stuff happened. There was a blinking head on a pole and a portal and Wilbur got swept into the sky and then a zombie ran into us and now we've ended up here and Ivo's with... Um, Monkus and the purple thing jumped on the troll's leg and yeah that was kind of a a, bit, a um, mismatched summary of what happened but nevertheless we're here with these zombies zombies somehow the expressions safe and zombies in the same sentence don't really make much sense yeah apart from the zombies will drag us from the safety of our houses and rip us to shreds <laughs> You see, he hates us. Well, you look more like a ghost. He's afraid of us. And a jester. And that's why he hates us. Our committee still has a lot of work to do. Y who are you? Who, who are you? We are the committee for the humane treatment of the undead. And why did you kidnap We're me? We're trying to improve the bad reputation that the undead have amongst the living. Well, you put me in a coffin. And amongst the dead. Because no one seems to like us. Where, where is Wilbur? The, there, there was a trap and a shadow. That was me. I knocked you down. You banged your head on a rock. Please forgive me. I don't really have this body under control yet. Why did you knock me over? What's happened to Wilbur? He probably saved your neck. Hmm. The chief orc from the camp set that trap. Orcs. If it caught you both, then it wouldn't only be your little friend who's in trouble. Great, there's orcs. Wilbur's in an orc camp? Oh man, and it's my fault? Uh, how do you mean? Ah, uh, well... Tell us, boy. As you can see, we've been blaming ourselves for this mess. No, carry on blaming yourself. All right. My name is Nate. I was in Seastone by the Western Ocean. Then along comes this little gnome and... Later. Five weeks later. And wham! Everything goes black. Then I wake up and there you are. You... You deceived him? You were only interested in shaving your own neck. Well, well it's not exactly like that. Shades of grey. Fifty of them? You should be wearing this pillory. <laughs> I've lived with pirates, cutthroats. Wow. But never, never. Now just hold it right there. Maybe I did behave just a tiny little bit narcissistically. You sold your friends down the river because you hoped it would help you get out of the whole thing in one piece? No. You have to get Wilbur out of there, and you have to free the elf. I agree. <sighs> I know. I know, you're right. And I have to get the artifact to safety, too. I will help you if you meant that seriously. My name is Gulliver. You can find me up in my workshop. Come on, body. Gulliver's workshop. Is, is that a thing? Gulliver's Tales is a thing. That woman needs to just shut the hell up. She's been going on for so long. She probably won't shut up after we speak to her. Let's examine the urns. A few dust-covered urns, most of them decorated with coats of arms. A double-headed eagle, a badger eating a snake. There's a king's head in orange and blue. And here, a green W in a lozenge. None of which means a thing to me. All right. They mean nothing to me. I guess they must be the family crests of the dead. A few du double head. Okay, that just says the same thing again, sure. Um, there's bats on the ceiling, which we can't do anything with. We can leave, but I do not want to do that yet. Let's look at the sarcophagus. A stone sarcophagus with a carved knight on it. Maybe it's the ex-lover of the howling ex-living woman. Oh, probably. A stone sarc- Okay. Let's speak exact- Yeah, let's speak to her. Isn't it a lovely day today? Oh, shush. My finely tuned intuition is telling me you might have some troubles. Oh, the trauma, the pain. Oh, woman stuff? Or proper pain, like physical? Probably both. <laughs> Have you had an accident while swimming? Looks like she shouldn't have gone into that deep water without her water wings. It wasn't an accident. I wanted to kill myself. 
It seems like you've it succeeded. Worked. Oh well, sweetheart, it's not all bad. Tell your Uncle Nate what's wrong. Don't make fun of me. Would I? You men are so insensitive. Only he wasn't. He understood me. <laughs> hmm. All right. Who is he? Maximilian. My Maximilian. Oh, the most beautiful man who ever walked under the stars. Someone's a bit love struck. Yes, yes. And then? Oh, God. He is God. Probably because you killed and yourself. That's why you wanted to kill yourself? We were engaged. Maximilian and I were to be married. It was heavenly. I, the rich daughter of a mithril merchant, and he... Get to the tragic bit, please. <laughs> I gave him chestfuls of gold and all my jewellery as a token of my love. But then he ran off with the next door neighbour. ...to arrange the most beautiful wedding ever. Ah, the con man hoofed it. He did not hoof it. <laughs> okay. Something must have happened to him. He must have been... Perhaps someone kidnapped him, and now he is languishing away in some tower, and... He hoofed it. He will come back! No, he hoofed and it. And we will be reunited, like two lovers, on. And... and why have you chosen to ruin the atmosphere in this particular crypt? This mm. is the resting place of his forebears. I will wait with his ancestors. Until I receive news well, from him. I think you're disturbing their peace, if I'm honest. Sounds logical. Well, it can't last that much longer. I know. As much as I'd love to spend more time with you, I have to get going. Hmm. Uh, I did notice there's a... Yeah, can I take that gold there thing? lies one of the ancestors of our watery corpse's fiancé. A tomb like that would have cost a fortune. The dead guy's family must have been loaded. Perhaps that's why she cries so much. Hmm. Okay, no, let's leave the crypt. Okay. What have we got out here? Alrighty, uh, evil stack. What? No, right. No wonder people do not like these guys. Have you seen the house they're living in? Like, good grief, guys, come on. Have some common sense. Speak to the chief zombie, talk to Gulliver, look at the mechanical monstrosity, there's pots, there's everything, there's graves. Let's look at the grave. A grave? There are a lot of them here. I don't know what's supposed to be so special about this one, though. No, me neither. Let's speak to hey, chief boss. zombie. Ah, chief the Keith. living one. Hmm, the living one. How many zombies do you have on your committee? And how many of you are there? In the committee, I mean? Probably just the two of you, right? The group is still in its early stages. Oh, three, we okay. We have three members so far. But the Spirit Union is associated to us, and the Federation of Programmers is thinking about finally going public with their undead status. Unfortunately, you can't become a member. You're too alive. I didn't want to become one anyway. Why are you stuck in this magical penitence pillory? What are you doing in that thing? And don't tell me it's a fashion statement. I've seen a lot of stuff, but that... No, 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 nothing like that. A paladin put this thing on me. What did you do? Insult his sister? Well, you could put it like that. <laughs> he put me in the pillory for it, but even then I couldn't keep my mouth shut. That's why the fair lady stabbed Hey, I did know you had a sword so sticking through. So I came back as a ghost and kept her awake at night. That's a bit... They sent a ghostbuster after me, and he actually caught me and killed me. He killed a ghost? Cool guy. Hmm. I then came back as the first undead ghost in history and messed up the fair lady's wedding. As a result, the paladin conjured this magical penitence pillory around my neck. Now he's lurking around outside the crypt. I think he'd like to cut me up into little pieces and throw me into the sea. Well, for good reason, Pretty too. nasty. You've hardly done anything to deserve that. Oh, I don't know. I've had a lot of time to reflect, and I'd like to end this feud. It only causes unhappiness. Okay. Why don't you apologize? I've tried, but the paladin only wants revenge. He hurled his hammer at me last time. Okay, can't you get out from it somehow? But 
if he could, do you not think he would have? It looks like it's locked there. That thing looks pretty uncomfortable. Can't you get the pillory off somehow? Would I still be wearing it if I could? You've got no idea how impractical this thing is. Try scratching your nose with it on. Or go to the bathroom. Oh, don't remind me. Hmm. This is a magical pillory. You can't just break it open. It's sealed for eternity. It'll only open when the paladin forgives me. So, never then. Oh, it would seem that way. Unfortunately so. See ya. Yeah, see Take you, care. buddy. And remember, we, the undead, are your friends. Rancid smelling, dead friends. Okay. Sure. Um, nothing new with him. What else is there? There's just that's the rear part of the crypt. Can't look at that fantastic Oh, we can look at the dripping candle though, apparently. The candles create the right atmosphere. Creepy, yet still with a hint of homeliness. Hmm. But this one isn't going to burn for much longer if it keeps dropping wax like that. Can we do anything with the wax? The candle... No, okay. Uh, talk to Gulliver. Hello, Gulliver. Hey, Gulliver. Ah, the living one. Yes, hello. Somehow your body doesn't seem quite to do... Quite seem to do what you want. Your body may be Does it? Kooky? No, it doesn't. My body isn't finished yet. Or do you mean the old one? The rotten one in the ground? I, uh, meant that one there. Oh, this one. Oh, <laughs> it's not mine. Just borrowed. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. I borrow bodies all the time. Whose body is it? Um, whose body is that, then? Esther's. And who is Esther? Hmm, no idea. Don't know her. Uh, but this is her body. Okay. She's helping me until I've got mine back. Then we're both going to look for her head. Esther. Exactly. Right. How did you get to know each other, you and Esther's body? Uh, for many years, I was in a grave out there. I chewed my way out of the coffin after my old body gave up the ghost. Then I saw this body outside, stumbling about, headless, knocking over gravestones, running into walls. I thought to myself, this is a sign. Hmm. Okay, what are you building there? It looks really... Weird. And what you're making there, that's supposed to become your new body? Exactly. Isn't it excellent? No, not yes. quite. Yes, it's, uh, ex-something. Extraordinary? Unfortunately, the construction drags along a bit. I'll tell you one thing. Never ask a headless zombie to replace your arms if you want to build precision machinery. I'll make a note of it. Hmm. What's new? Good, uh, good... Good info for the future, I suppose. Doesn't all that wailing from the water corpse... It was driving me Doesn't nuts. Doesn't all that wailing from that failed swimmer down there really get on your nerves? Steady on. The young lady is suffering great distress. And she lets it out. Day in, day out. For hours on end. <laughs> so what's the story with her missing lover? He jilted her. Cold as ice. Raked in her gold and enjoys a sweet life somewhere down south. Hmm. She seems to think differently. The good woman isn't really in touch with reality. She still believes everything will be resolved one day. She's waiting for him to appear or send her a letter. Anything at all. Okay. I've got to get going. Breathe. Feel my heartbeat. That sort of thing. Yeah, it's probably a good plan. Don't let me stop you. Okay, let's look at this little pot. I saw that before. A pot containing some gloopy glue. Gloopy There's glue. There's a small stick in it. Can I have it? Take the glue stick. Sure. Alright, string, can I have that? I think it's that unbreakable thread that you hold roast meat together with. There must be a good ten meters of it on the roll. Can I have it? We're getting some craft materials together. Are we making a collage? A flattened tube of yellow paint. I don't think there can be much left in it. Can I have it? Yes, I can. Yellow paint? What's ah, yellow and smells like blue paint? still a bit in it. I don't need the tube anymore. Yellow paint. Huh. That was funny. Um, okay, is that everything we can take from here? Look at the mechanical monstrosity. This project's not looking all that hopeful, in my opinion. The pair of them seem to have some serious communication problems. Yeah. This project. Okay, and there's nothing else there that we can do. 
Alright guys, this has been a, a bit of a talk episode, I'm not sure how long it's been, I'm hoping about 15 minutes or so. Hope you guys have enjoyed, if you have, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to see the rest of the episodes in this series, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Bye bye for now. You play as Esteban, a stressed out bull with a lot of creativity flowing through his bones. Your objective is to help Esteban to create beautiful art by steering him through a collage world of various school craft textures to collect as many craft materials as possible. However, every time you steer him, Esteban becomes a little more stressed out and if you steer him too much, he'll lose all the craft pieces he's collected. You can reduce the stress by taking out Esteban's anger on poor unsuspecting walls by bouncing into them, which also raises his speed. Barraging into helpless denizens.